so we're recording so i'm getting feedback now from someone i'm not quite sure um so if you're not speaking please mute but welcome to the PyScript fun meeting a small and select group uh this week uh so it's the 11th of april uh 2024 um what's PyScript fun it's where we have fun with PyScript. So it's not really supposed to be technical. It's supposed to be more about fun, but of course there are technical aspects to it as well. And the way I like to describe it is, you know, back before COVID when we all went to the office and you'd find yourself in the lunch break or by the water cooler or whatever, and somebody would come up and go, hey, do you want to see this cool thing I've been working on? And you go on then and you'd wander over to their desk or whatever and they show you the cool thing and you have lots of interesting conversations and, you know, spark ideas and things like that. That's what this is supposed to be, but clearly without the face-to-face -face meeting, lunch breaks or water coolers and things like that. So that's what PyScript Fun is. We have one demo today uh, from Andrea. So uh, without further ado... Andrea, you know what the score is. Show us the thing. We might ask you some questions afterwards, and then that's it. Floor's yours, matey. I can't hear what you're saying. You're muted. Sorry. Uh, hopefully, the feedback is not entirely mine. Um, I, I just. I just closed um, a file that I shouldn't have, but um, yeah, so the demo is closely related to the last demo on Tuesday, and um, it's still about the terminal, so there are more things that we should or we would like to allow in either the terminal actually the editor too so to interact with the input output and allow anyone to somehow listen to the to the input or provide an input and eventually forward back an output this was required to be able to interact also with other devices that might be not in the terminal uh, UI but part of the loop and um, yeah, so I went ahead and tried to figure out how do we do that. And maybe I should just share my screen. Mm -hmm. As usual, uh, share. Here we go. Um, so slightly different from the last demo is that I'm bootstrap bootstrapping um, an NPy terminal. Now I added uh, a little thing like if you if you do pi instead of unpi, it bootstraps pyodide. And so it's like, okay, why would you do that? Just to test how things work across different interpreters. And uh, that's a tiny addiction, but uh, worth that, That's pretty cool one... for testing purposes. Yeah. That's just yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it also, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could, could you do it again? Because it shows people the differences startup time between pyodide and micropyodide. Oh. So this is. This yeah, is... that's that's pi. I can refresh, and that's it. Uh, that's pi. Yeah, so there's a couple of seconds of startup time when you're using C Python. Uh, maybe but... less. Maybe less. Yeah. Maybe less. But yeah. that's my super powerful desktop machine. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely there is some delay, and uh, the default is not by accident. And micro Python right now, or MPy as a as a script type. So the thing is, a few days ago, actually, uh, when I say a few days ago, I mean yesterday, <laughs> um, I found a very interesting article. And this article is about um, power of powers of three in binary. So it's about representing as a binary string the power of three and uh, what's the result and there was some python code and i was like okay i really want i have an editor right i really want to copy this go here paste it and see what happens maybe dropping just for indentation sake maybe dropping oh actually i cannot I shouldn't drop it because it's gonna be all indented this way but this is not the issue the indentation is not 
Okay, now, now I just told me indentation issue. <laughs> but the, the indentation is literally not the real issue. Um, I, can, I can fix indentation. So I can just do this and uh, paste it. And I still will have invalid syn syntax thing. Um, the reason is the current uh, stack we are using, which is Xterm.js, and probably there is a plugin about it because the thing about Xterm is that, that there are tons of plugins, but I don't know all of them. But the thing is, it doesn't work. And uh, so I try to input manually all these things, and you can just, oh, uh, you, you can just guess what's the issue with this code, with this simple code. Um, in here, we don't have NumPy by default in MicroPython, and that was the reason actually I implemented Pi. So let me test. But you, <laughs> what does it do? If I do import NumPy log two, ah, that is not included in the Pi that. And I was like, okay, why do I need NumPy just to import log two? I was just gonna I say that, that it's built into the standard library, isn't it? From uh, math. No, um, from math. Yeah. Log two, but math is a standard library, so yeah. that was probably involved. And so I, basically, I patch this thing. And actually, let me let me try this. But even in Pyodide, I think it doesn't work. Oh, it worked! Woo! <laughs> so Look at that. Pyodide, <laughs> okay. I gotta be honest. This didn't work before. On PyLite, I can reproduce dropping the import log to the NumPy thing. I can reproduce actually exactly the the thing that I saw here. Uh, not not here. Here. So this should be identical, I think, because um, yeah, you can see at least at the edge is uh, perfectly identical to yeah. what this image reproduces. And so I went further, and uh, let me drop the, the the log import log two again, and then I do this. I want to use it, and this actually I'm I'm super surprised. So this was a demo effect because this to me didn't work before, and it actually working. Awkwardly Ooh, now, ah, yeah. Okay, so X term isn't re um, isn't redrawing when you move the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. This is why it's called PyScript script fun. It's because. <laughs> yeah. It's because it's funny when short. things go wrong. <laughs> long story short, at least something is not right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, and um, these are the, the the copy and paste things. That I tried from the website. So, so I, had, I had to rewrite this in a in a way that is compatible with both um, MicroPython and Pyodide. I was just about Python. to say, yeah. And I and also I realized, which I didn't know, that there is a format native Python utility that doesn't exist in MicroPython. So I had uh -huh. to rewrite this format, and in a probably awkward way because it's just doing these which is a string formatted yes but the result is that is um, upside down so yeah. if I can show you now I can I can do this let me try to just paste this in Pyodide yay hey. but you can see it's just the other way around and probably the result is completely different because at this point I think I'm showing one instead of zero and vice versa yeah and so it's a specular, speculative, uh, sorry, specular, but not precise. But I, I don't care. I was just, okay, this works in Pyodide. And now I, I'm going to try the same in MicroPython. And again, I have invalid syntax. So I, I wanted to provide a way to actually paste code that works in both Pyodide the MicroPython, and that's the most basic utility to do so. Um, not because I want MicroPython to 
not handle paste, but somehow the repo doesn't handle paste properly. So it's like it keeps adding stuff and it considers that probably a single line, including the new lines and everything else. And so there's some investigation needed from my side, but at the same time I thought, okay, this is a good opportunity to explore a way to not from the user pasting code, but from other scripts or other logic pasting code into the editor. And so the, the implementation was like this. So, well, I'm just injecting the either Py or MPy worker terminal. They do the same import code, code interact. And then when I click on paste, I want to tell the terminal, the extern, to understand what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trashing into it, and somehow um, just produce a result. Turns out this is more complicated than it should be. <laughs> first, of all, first of all, because I need to access internals, and I, 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 I did read all the topics around Xterm, and they say no, we shouldn't expose. Uh, add-ons out of the box and so I was like why <laughs> but at the same time I, I read the reasoning and it was good enough so I agree with them they shouldn't expose add-on manager because and add-ons because these are probably all um, details that if you are providing an extern you don't want anyone else to mess up yeah. mess out with, uh, with, with, with all of them I'm trying Yet, Andre it works because they are not using private. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, Andrea, yeah. do you know about MicroPython's uh, raw mode? Yes. In the REPL. Uh, in REPL, once you're already in the terminal and yeah. you try to enable raw mode, it doesn't raw mode. What you have to do is to enable the paste. Yeah. So, if you enable the paste, to enable the paste, basically here I have to provide the code five in terms of ASCII codes, yeah. code five. That's not portable because that doesn't work in PyoBet. So what I thought is that how about I create a prompt? In this case, is the easiest way to go. It's just a prompt. And I type something in the prompt and whoa, that's it. It's MicroPython working as well. That was awesome. And then there was another demo and it was about um, the other triangle, and I was like, okay, let me try the other triangle, let's see how it goes. Um, the slightly annoying thing is that when I'm processing this stuff, MicroPython expects always the, 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 the last enter to do something, and this, no, this is not working. <laughs> okay. I, I don't, think you not it. It. don't think you this copied it all. It. Yeah, you got a call out. All right. What did I do? Ah, oh, no. Ah, you've no. got it's indented wrong. Anyway, it's not important. So yeah. the moment I realized that I had to access, uh, sorry, I had to access in user line code. So from, from our user perspective, I don't find this acceptable mm. because within um, PyScript, we have read line, we have the, the real reference. So I, I opened a merge request that actually changed quite the landscape around this demo. And this is the new demo. So the new demo, everything else is the same. And, but at the same time, the, the logic when to, that I have to implement for the button, uh, let's do is yeah I... you you can see that look when you do def output the the indentation was wrong when you pasted it in yeah, in there that that might be my vs code yeah. doing something weird. yeah um but here the logic is just i have an event on click and the event is about this button this little button um and i, I just reach the current script terminal I could give it an ID like ID um, cool and uh, and use cool instead it doesn't really matter and um, and then I have pipe terminal process 
And in this case, I'm just passing the prompt code, but it could be any code from mm. user input, from file system, from, from anything, literally. And so this is the new way to process actual code. And so I'm gonna try this again um, in this new version. I'm gonna press enter. I'm gonna try to do this again, which I'm sure it used to work. So let me let me just refresh, just in case it was something else before. This, no, look, oh. it's, 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 yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, invisible spaces. Okay. I just spotted some invisible space in there. I'm glad you can see invisible spaces because I can't no, usually no. see invisible spaces because they're invisible. <laughs> this is still wrong. I don't know what's going on. Why, why is this happening? I tried this thousand times. Gosh. <laughs> but anyway, this is my input issue. It's not that... Okay, this this is good. This oh wait, maybe maybe I have to do this because of the oh no, it should it should work. Yeah, you need that there. Yeah, that should work. Yeah. It should work. I agree with you. Oh man, and it, it needs to work. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so we have you, you probably don't notice in in this screen because it's not. As accurate as this image but it's a bit more spread um, across the screen and um, so the diagonal ends here and um, the reason is in this example all squares are actually square, squares yeah and in the terminal the squares are not square so this should be way less taller than the, 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 the than we can see right now yeah but anyway the cool thing is that we can Process input, somehow send the input. Um, I don't know what's happening here. I just want to try again for, for the sake of live demo. And uh, and I think that's ah, what this works. Okay, so it was my my input was was really badly badly shaped. I want, okay, let me try this <laughs> now after. <laughs> Maybe we can see the difference. Well, you can see that this goes ends here, and this ends closer to mm. to my left side of the screen. Um, so yeah, basically, long story short, this all works. Um, and then while I was working on this feature, somebody asked me, "Hey, how about I print um, HTTPS um, PyScript.com, right?" Uh, what happens? Nothing. It's just PyScript.com, right? Um, what happens in in uh, let me open a console. It's uh, clickable, I, isn't it? If I echo um, HTTPS PyScript.com, or if I do create a new repo uh, with Node.js, you can see that I can hover with my mouse, and if I control click, it's gonna open something. So the same is um, node, node, um, console log, uh, and this is not because node does anything particularly. It's the shell, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it's the shell. So the shell is able to give hints about what is a link and what is not. And we had this little, very little discussion because it then it, it, it ended up with Jeff mentioning uh, how about this plugin in x7 i was like hmm, is that a plugin and it's 2k plugin so the plugin is just um what's it called web links web links and this is the the code that is needed to bring it in because i already provided um in here um a config so the config in this case is actually bringing in yep. these web links as a JS module, and in here I'm just adding to the terminal. I'm adding the the a new web links add-on. So I just did it, and now without further talking about it, I can. Hey. Hey. All right. Um. That's it. So the fun part is that. Everything works as I <laughs> as I hoped. Um, 
not so fun part is that I think despite the fact that we still need this process ability because I'm sure there are a lot of use cases when you just want to from uh, um, outer sources, not just the user, you want to um, imperatively say, hey, uh, consult terminal, please um, elaborate this code. And that works. At the same time, uh, I just realized it works out of the box, almost out of the box in, in, uh, in Pyodide. And I hope I can find a better way to make it work out of the box in MicroPython, but I'm not sure because I ha I had to change no code for Pyodide, and it apparently it works. Um, and so it's probably about handling events from extern, so it's going to be a more complicated thing. But uh, um, if anyone asks, uh, how can I inject code uh, from this file, from that thing, from, I don't know, copy and paste, we can say, hey, all you need <laughs> is this. A terminal process code. Some yeah. code that can be also anything. Anything Python. That's going to be interpreted correctly. If it's multiple lines, it's going to be interpreted correctly too. And in this case, let me just try this. So, for instance, uh, if I'm here and I grab... Yeah, that's the script. And uh, I see process. I don't know. One plus two. You can see that already. I have yep. a result. So this is this is it for today. And uh, some progress on the terminal. I think the terminal is still super cool. But this little detail was was important for some use case that they asked us already about. I want to hook into what's going into the terminal and um, the next step will be with a different merge request and different um, fun parts to, to, to hook into what's going out or uh, yeah, basically input output and uh, react to what's going out. Um, cool. That's it. Cool. Andrea, as always, do you want to stop sharing your screen? Uh, as always, uh, that was a lot of fun, actually, because you had to overcome quite a number of um, rather odd technical problems to, to get where where we've got to. But um, there we'll always find, you know, different because they're different interpreters and different implementations. So when we're using MicroPython as the runtime or Pyodide as the runtime, it's going to be um, uh, we're always going to find little niggles. But so long as we find them and then we can put them in our docs. So that when somebody Googles, why isn't this working with MicroPython? The first thing that comes up is going to be our docs that says, aha, but by the way, this is the case, or here's the workaround or something like that. Then folks can, um, folks are on blocks and things. So um, that was pretty cool. Do we have a a any further comments or questions? Otherwise, I think we're, we're done for the day. Nope. And I also need to go. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking exactly that, and I know that you need to go. So, okay, uh, with with that, I'll um, I'll just stop the recording. Um, mm -hmm.